When people apply for a job, one of the first questions that they ask their prospective employer is, what's in it for me? What are the benefits for this job? Well, you may be asking the same question with respect to the infilling of the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. I want to explain to you today the benefits of speaking in tongues, not my opinion, but from the B-I-B-L-E. So I want to welcome you today to this podcast sponsored by Dean Shropshire Ministries. I am Kathy Shropshire. In our last podcast together, I explained to you why I got filled with the Holy Spirit, why I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, because as I told you, it literally changed my life. I would not be here today. I would probably be in the world climbing the executive ladder, uh, doing my own thing, maybe uh, continuing to go on to church on Sundays, uh, maybe living like hell during the week, uh, or rather live living worldly. But I am so grateful that I received the gift of the infilling with the Holy Spirit, and I began to speak in tongues because there are benefits to speaking in tongues, and that's what I want to share with you today. I want to challenge you to listen to these and to pray the prayer at the end of this podcast so you too can have your life changed by the power of God through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now, as I explained in another earlier podcast, in order to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and this is a gift, this is a gift from the the father to his children. Um, But in order to receive this gift, you must be born again. And I didn't give you scripture, but I want to give the scripture to you now, which should be marked in your Bible as really one of the most important scriptures that you will ever read because this um, solidifies your um, your salvation and it's found in Romans 10 9 and 10 and this is what it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you shall be saved for with the heart Man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. As I told you, this is the most important decision that you will ever make to become a child of God, to be saved, to be born again. This is a prerequisite to the infilling or baptism with the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. The salvation experience, Romans 10, 9, and 10, is for the sinner. But the infilling with the Holy Spirit, baptism, baptized with the Holy Spirit, is for the believer. So I have listed for you today seven benefits that I I believe will impact your life and will encourage you to, yes, I want this gift, There are benefits to speaking in tongues. You know, God is so gracious. He is such a giver. He wants you and I to live in the fullness. And when I found out all the benefits of being a child of God, like your daddy loves you. He loves you so much. And he has given you a book full of precious promises so that you can live the overcoming victorious life that Jesus bled out for you to have. And as you get in the word, you find out more and more and more about what Jesus did for you. So the first benefit that I want to talk to you about is that you are speaking directly to God. Every believer should be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues because they are speaking directly to God. 1 Corinthians 14.2 says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no one understands 
Howbeit in the spirit, he speaks mysteries or divine secrets. So this is really a picture of the supernatural to think that you are actually speaking to the creator of the universe. You are actually speaking to God in a language that he has placed in you to use to speak to him. That is really, really powerful. Number two, every believer should speak in tongues because when you are speaking in tongues, you're building yourself up on your most holy faith, according to Jude 20, or you're edifying yourself. You're building your faith muscle up. And that's so important because the picture in the Greek is charging a dead battery and We all need to be charged up in faith because the enemy is, according to John 10, 10, is roaming around seeking whom he may devour. That's in in Peter. But in John 10, 10, it says there's a thief that comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I've come that you might have that overcoming life, abundant life, victorious life. That's what he came to give you. So when you when you pray in tongues, you're building yourself up. You're charging your battery. You're connecting those battery cables like you do a car to a dead battery, and you're charging yourself up. It gives you strength. It gives you stamina to live by faith, to live the overcoming life. It basically stimulates your faith, if I can say it that way. Number three, every believer should speak in tongues because when you're speaking in tongues, you're praying the perfect prayer. We discussed this a little bit on a previous broadcast, but I want to reiterate it on this podcast because I want you to get it down on the inside of you that God has given you a special uh, language for you to pray and intercede with so you can pray for situations, circumstances, people that you don't know how to pray for. There are people that are hurting and you can pray with your understanding. Yes, of course you can. But then maybe your understanding isn't the the perfect prayer for that person or that situation. So God has given us this means whereby we can intercede. Let me read it to you. It's found in Romans 8, 26 through 27. And it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities or weakness, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. God and God knows everything. I mean, he's given us the answer to to any kind of question that, that we may have. And he's saying, when you run out of, of your own understanding or praying in English, then I've given you the solution to continue to pray or intercede in tongues or in the spirit. But the spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he searches the hearts, knowing what is the mind of the spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So basically what you're doing when you intercede in a particular situation, you're praying the perfect will of God the perfect will of God. Your spirit by the Holy Spirit is praying through you the to the Father, the perfect answer. God, God knows everything. The Holy Spirit is a genius. So when he prays through you, you can be confident based on this scripture that you are praying the perfect will of God. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for the ability to pray in the Holy Spirit. This is great uh, for praying for others, situations, your children, when you just don't know how you ought to pray. Number four, every believer should be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues because, listen to this, it will purify your natural tongue. What does that mean? Well, it means it'll purify your tongue from vulgarity, bad language, ungodly talk, profane talk, um, criticizing and judging other people. 
because the Holy Spirit will quicken you on the inside because you you prayed in the Holy Spirit. You're you built yourself up on your most holy faith. You're sensitive to him. If you have an anger problem, then you pray in the Holy Ghost and you won't have those those outbursts of anger. You see, the Holy Spirit will purify your tongue. It will will uh, enable you by praying in the Holy Spirit to control those tendencies or those bad habits to have those outbursts of criticism, anger, judging. You have to realize that the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we have to learn how to control this tiny member. And we have to learn by the help of the Holy Spirit to say what God says, not to say what maybe we used to say or say stupid stuff that we don't want to come to pass because death and life is in the power of the tongue. You can speak life to your life or you can speak death to your life. Number five, every believer should speak in tongues because it will refresh you spiritually. You know, sometimes we go through life and we kind of feel spiritually weak or spiritually kind of down. Well, you need the refreshment that comes from praying in the Holy Spirit. So you pray in the Holy Spirit, you pray in tongues, and you get refreshed. It's like um, a picture of this is on a hot day, you've been out working in the yard, It's you're hot, sweaty, and you come in and you get a nice cold glass of ice water. And, and when you drink that, it's just like, ah, oh, that was so refreshing. That's what praying in tongues does. It refreshes you. This is what the scripture says, Isaiah 28, 11 through 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people to whom he has said, This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. Or this is the refreshing. You need rest? Pray in the Holy Ghost. You need refreshing? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Number six, every believer should speak in tongues because it provides a way for them to pray for things that they're unaware of. Now, what does that mean? You know, the Holy Spirit knows everything, but he knows which things need to be prayed for. And this is what's happened to me, and I'm sure it will happen to you also. If you're yielded, if you're sensitive to the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit has awakened me in the middle of the night to pray. And I just feel an unction on the inside that I need to go pray. So I go to my my chair and I pray. I begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Sometimes he will tell me the situation for whom I am praying, but but other times he doesn't. And I just know that somebody somewhere needs prayer and God, I'm available anytime. I'll get up and get out of bed and go in there and pray. And so that's what I do. I go and I sit down and I pray in the Holy Spirit. By faith, I'm believing I'm praying the perfect prayer for whatever situation that the Holy Spirit wants me to pray. Now, I pray until I get an unction to stop. Uh, Some people laugh. Some people cry. I just feel like, okay, I'm done. And then I go back to bed for that sweet, peaceful sleep that God always promises. But I know I've been uh, available and I've done what I felt was necessary by the Spirit to do. Number seven, every believer should speak in tongues because it will assist you in worshiping God. You know, you can pray um, in tongues You can worship in tongues. You can sing in tongues. And I would encourage you to do that. I would encourage you to sing in tongues. Sing a new song. Sing a song that magnifies God. Sing a song that worships God as you you sing in the Spirit. 
the scripture says that on the day of Pentecost, they were in the upper room and they received the infilling of the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues. The people who heard them down below, they thought they were drunk because they were so, so excited and so energized and, and, and speaking in their own language that they understood. And there were different, different, um, di different people down there. They all spoke different languages, but they heard them speak in, in their own tongue, their own language. And you know what it says? It says they were magnifying God, magnifying God. They were worshiping God with their, their uh, praying in the spirit. That's what you do when you pray in the spirit. You can worship God in the spirit. And it says they were proclaiming the wonderful works of God. God is such a good God. And you can you can do that in the spirit. You can do that with your understanding. You can worship God. Speaking in tongues helps you to do that. Now, when I received the infilling of the Holy Spirit, I had memorized scriptures as a child. Uh, but there was a period of time where I hadn't really even remembered those scriptures. I hadn't paid much attention to them. But as I, I began to study the Word of God again, like really study the Word of God, those scriptures came alive to me. And that's the only way I can describe it. Like I had revelation of what they now meant before I... I was confused. I memorized them. But just because you have head knowledge doesn't mean you have heart knowledge. Just because you have head knowledge doesn't mean you have understanding. You don't have the wisdom to apply it to your life. And that's where I was. But when I received the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the revelator or the teacher of the church living on the inside of me as I was yielded to him, praying in the Holy Ghost, I'd read the scripture and then lo and behold, the Holy Spirit would instruct me on how to apply that to my life. It made sense. If you don't learn how to apply this to your life, you're just reading a book. But no, this is a now book. This is a live book. And it will will show you with the help of the Holy Spirit how to take these promises, how to take these these words that the the Spirit of God has spoken and apply it to your life so that your life will be different. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be rejected. You don't have to be down and dirty and sick and poor and broke. You don't have to be. You take the promises of God and stand on them. And the Holy Spirit empowers you to strengthen your faith so that you can believe God regardless of the situation. So that you can speak life instead of death. So that you can begin to hunger and thirst after this word, we began, once we got filled with the Holy Spirit, we began to hunger and thirst for more of the word of God. And here we are, 45 years later, still hungering and thirsting after more of the word of God. And guess what? There's more. There's more. There's more for you. You start where you are and you begin. You begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness. And the Bible says when we do that, we will be filled. The Bible says when you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. He wants you to have the best life. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be full of joy and happy. He wants so much for you. And it's available through his word. Glory to God. Now, I want to share with you one thing, because you may be watching me and and listening to this podcast and, and you say, gosh, that sounds really good. I want to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I want to speak in other tongues. Glory to God. That's your first step that you want to that you want to. But remember, I said you have to ask. You have to ask. So what we're going to do right now, if you want to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you do it by faith, just like you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You did not see when you 
made that commitment to receive Jesus as your Lord and to be born again, to be a child of God. You didn't see the Holy Spirit come into your spirit, clean you up <laughs> and and uh, bring the life and nature of God to your dead spirit. He recreated you. You became a new creature in Christ Jesus. You, It was a spiritual transaction. This is the same way. But you will speak in other tongues. You will speak in other tongues as we pray. And you have to say, I will speak in other tongues because I'm going to ask to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit and I will receive the gift of tongues and you will speak in other tongues. So I just want you to pray with me. Now, you have to be saved. Remember, I told you that. That's the prerequisite. So repeat this prayer after me. I want you to say this. Father, I thank you that Jesus is my Lord and Jesus is my Savior. I come to you right now to receive the gift of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I will speak in other tongues. As the Holy Spirit gives me utterance in Jesus name. Now begin to speak. Begin to speak. The words will come up, bubble out of your belly. Sounds that are um, unfamiliar to you. So I'm going to pray along with you and believe that these uh, words, these syllables will come out of your belly, just like they did coming out of my belly. Pastor Dean's all people who are filled with the Holy Spirit don't speak in English, but you have to open your mouth. Son de la bracon de la braton de la Father, I thank you for filling my brother, my sister with the Holy Spirit. They've asked, they believe, they receive, and I expect them right now to speak in other tongues. On the la brason de la brechen de le brocon de la braton de let it out, let it out. On the la bracon de la brasan de la bracon de le brechen de le brocochon de la brata. E que le broto, e que le broto, e que le broton de lo brecen de le brocon de la brason de la onda la braton de la bracan de la brasan de la brachan. O to lo brecen de le brecen de le brocon de la brason de la brasan de la aca la bratan de la onda la braton de la. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Those words were the perfect prayer language that the Holy Spirit has given you so you can directly communicate with the Father. Now, I want you to speak in tongues as much as you can. Yes, that's what I want you to do because you're now possessed with and filled with the Holy Spirit. You are a tongue talker. Onda le bresendere, onda la brasa, eshende le broconda, la brasonda, la braca. You can do this at any time. You can do this at any time you can speak in tongues glory to god hallelujah now some of you may have received some uh syllables that they sound like baby talk well think about it if you ever had a baby the baby starts talking and they start blabbering and you don't know what they're saying but i'm telling you just like the youth to your mind. You don't know what you're saying. The Father knows what you're saying, and He has given you this gift. Even if it's a couple of syllables, He will expand on that gift as you're faithful. When I first got filled with the Holy Spirit, I only received one little word. But I was faithful to continue to pray that word. And the enemy came to me and said, you're you're not doing anything. You're talking baby talk. You're just jabbering stuff you made up. Well, no, I knew I didn't make that up because I never thought of that word before. But as I was faithful over my one word, I got a lot more. Now, Pastor Dean, on the other hand, he got 
lots of words when he was prayed for. He went on that way. That may be the way you are. You received a lot of words. Don't stop. Just continue to pray those all the time. Build yourself up on your most holy faith and begin to practice that. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. This was given to you by God. This is your special prayer language for you to pray to the Father. You are communicating with the Father. So praise God. I'm so excited you got filled with the Holy Spirit today. I want you to let us know so I can send you this little book. This little book is on Why Tongues by Kenneth E. Hagan. And what it does is it tells you uh, a little bit of information more than I could possibly share with you in one broadcast podcast about tongues. And so this will be helpful in your walk. Um, and and I just want you to know that, that, that you have opened the door to a life that is changed today, as long as you continue to pray in tongues. Now, many people who get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, that's the extent of their speaking in tongues. No, 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 that won't be you. You will continue to speak in tongues. And as you speak in tongues, the Holy Spirit will add more. And then you can do like I do, intercession. You can, you will notice, you know, your your mouth changing, the way you talk, that you don't have uh, such a critical spirit. You're not, oh, it just opens up a whole new world. Like I said, all these benefits go back and listen to this podcast podcast again. And I I am so grateful. I'm so grateful and so thankful that you listened, you heard, you expected, you received by faith the infilling of the Holy Spirit and you spoke in tongues. I love you. And until next time, continue to speak in tongues. (laughs) 